Welcome to Pride and Parsippany. I'm your host, Mayor James Barbero, and today I have with me Sergeant Joe Puzo of the Parsippany Police Department and Patrolman Remo D'Alessandro. Um, and the topic today is um, scams that are going on in Parsippany. But before we get to that, can uh, Joe, you give us a little background of yourself here and your history as a police officer? Okay, I was, uh, I was hired by the Parsippany Police Department uh, in July of uh, 1999. I worked in the patrol division until uh, 2007. I uh, was assigned then to the investigative division uh, as a detective. In 2014, I was promoted to uh, sergeant, and I stayed in the detective bureau as a detective sergeant. Good. Remo? How are you? I started in 2001 with the Patterson Police Department and transferred to Parsippany in 2004. Uh, throughout my entire career, up until 2013, I spent in the patrol division, uh, and then I was assigned to the sports services division as the community relations officer for the department. Uh, thank you. Um, the first question is going to be, what are the predominant, because, you know, the scams, you just had the IRS scam, and that's been all over the daily record, um, so, but what are the predominant types of scams that are out there right now, um, and that the residents should be aware of? Uh, well, the IRS scam right now is the most popular. Right. Uh, that's uh, where people call uh, the victim, and they say, well, I'm officer so-and-so from the IRS. Uh, you owe a certain amount of money, and if you don't pay this amount of money, we're going to have you arrested. And they, they put the fear in people, they, they prey on people's fear at this point. So, and they sound very legitimate. Uh, they practice this, like, you know your job, this is their job, to scam people. So then they ask people to wire the money, uh, which some, it really should set up a flag to some people, but it doesn't, and then they prey on certain people, they, they prey upon the elderly, or they prey upon people who aren't familiar, uh, they haven't been in the United States too long. So that's one of the biggest scams going on right now. And how do these actors um, and, you know, obtain the contact and the personal information? They can, uh, they can get them off of various free websites. You'd be surprised at what's out there on the internet just by a, a simple internet search of a name. Um, <coughs> some People still are listed in the phone book. They can get the, the phone numbers from there as well. Um, they can also do, we always say, be careful with dumpster diving or your mail. Make sure that you know, you're, you're taking care of disposing of your, your uh, sensitive documents by maybe purchasing a, a cross cutter shredder or something like that. If you're going away on vacation, don't um, let your mail accumulate because people can go through your mail that way and your trash and, and get uh, sensitive information. So they could get your your uh, social security numbers and credit card information just by going through what you have as well. When, when, well, we just recently had the IRS scan. I went on the IRS site and basically they tell you that usually we don't, we'll contact you certified mail or in right. any other way. They don't really come visit you or give you those types of phone calls. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I went on there because I was kind of curious, you know, if the IRS had been proactive and it seems like they have been. Um, but can you tell me, uh, the folks in the audience, you know, what, what to look for and, and what are the signs of a scam? Basically, if it's, like we were talking about the other day, if it's too good to be true, it, it probably is. Right. That's the number one sign. Um, if they're uh, trying to lock you into a fast-paced answering type of response uh, to get you, to not give you enough time to think and respond, they don't want you to get off the phone, uh, that kind of thing. Um, y you know, we, you had brought up a good point about the U URL, if you want to explain that. Well, that's, that's another thing really to look for, especially um, via email. And we're going to go, uh, besides the IRS scam, phishing, okay? Uh, they'll get an email and it will look like it's from, uh, say, oh, this is your PayPal account, you really need to update your, your information on your PayPal or your Craigslist. And you have to look where it's coming from because PayPal is not going to be at G, you know, at Gmail, the Google account, yeah. or Yahoo account. That, it, it's, that's not what that is. Mm -hmm. So that's one of your first things. And some people aren't aware of that. They just look at it and, you know, they're busy with the, the kids or something. They're distracted. Right. Boom, 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 and there you go. Yeah. And if I could just add, it's not just um, government entities. I mean, although I, to my knowledge, I believe of, of at least one that was fraudulent saying they were from a Parsippany. Um, utility like a w the water department or something like that so they pretend to be local that was actually the first time I've heard of that recently probably last year I think it happened um, but it's not always a government entity it could be a fraudulent charitable organization um, 
anything, a, a foreign lottery, you've won a foreign lottery kind of thing. Or it could be off of the website such as like a Craigslist or something where someone's looking for employment um, and they are fraudulently contacted and saying, okay, well, we'll send you the first week's check, and, but it's going to be in more amount than that. Just send us back the difference and it's a, it's a bad check. You know, and it's crazy. I mean, let's face <coughs> it, this is a cyber world now. And you look at Facebook. I know that when we created our Facebook page, the township, someone else created one Correct. very similar to yeah. it to, to make it look like it was an official site when in fact it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And we did contact Facebook and I, I, I think it's down now, but I don't know if Facebook got it taken down or right. they took it down. Uh, but th that's, that's kind of scary how people try to fraudulently um, put themselves yeah. out there and, you know. But let me, this, there's a question because, I mean, I've never received a phone call from anybody on a scam. And I'm always pretty, you know, skeptical when sure. I get a phone call to begin with. And it's funny you talked about that because everybody wants telling me I got a great credit score. And then when I look at the email, because you click on the email, I'm like, and it says Citibank. Right. And and then I look at the email. Well, if it's Citibank, usually it's going to be city dot com or whatever, or something like that. And that just happened just recently. So of course I delete it right away. Right. Um, and it, it seems like it's just becoming more prevalent. It's, it's out there. And what 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 should residents do, um, or anybody in fact, to avoid these types of scams? What types of questions should they ask? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, um, number one is uh, who's calling and why, basically. What you know? Who, who is this? this organization calling me, why would they be calling me? Um, you know, even if it is the saying they're from the IRS or from a participant utility company, you simply hang up, say you don't want to answer this question right now, let me verify it, right. and call that, that establishment to make sure they're supposed to be contacting you. Uh, and like you said, the IRS isn't going to call you and say, you know, wire us some money, it's just not going to happen. Um, so it's good to be cognizant of that. Um, they can also, um, you know, some, some scams will say, you know, well, you've won a free gift, you just have to pay for the shipping, and that's to get your information. Right. Well, you know, if it's free, why am I paying for anything? Right. That's the questions you should, you should ask. Um, and then also, what time are they calling? For the fraudulent charitable organizations or any kind of telemarketing? <coughs> By law, the Federal Trade Commission only allows legitimate uh, organizations to, to contact you between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. So right. if it's before or after that time frame, then then uh, you know. Then it's it's most likely fraudulent. Well, h how how would you know? I'll, I'll give an example because this just happened in, in, in my family, where um, somebody had, <laughs> you know, sh ship all these vitamins and powdered protein drinks, mm -hmm. and actually they never ordered it, never. and it was somebody has got the identity. Yeah. Um, TD Bank took care of it. Don't get me wrong. It's just the fact mm -hmm. that somebody stole the information. How, how can someone, how, how can they, how do you know if you're, if, I mean, that way you know someone stole it. Sure. But how, do, how would you know? How can you prevent it from your identity being stolen? Because it's, it, it, let's face it, in today's world, yeah. if you pay by credit card, you pay by check, you've got to give your routing number, you've got to give your bank account number, you're giving it to somebody that, you know, they could steal the information, they right. can hack the computers. Yeah. Um, well, and one of the other uh, ways of also uh, being scammed that you, you might not be able to track so well is, um, is basically I'll put up some of these pictures here. The skimmers. These are called skimmers, okay? And if you look here on this side of, uh, of this picture, you notice the, the pamphlet uh, container that holds pamphlets, let's say, at an ATM machine about the bank information. Well, it could fraudulently be a camera that's put inside there um, to read your PIN number when you put your ATM card into the machine. Can I see that? Sure, so absolutely. Let me hand that to him. Oh, so that's what and then the skimmer portion is just a identical type of device that goes right over where the ATM card would go in right. and reads the card information. So the camera is grabbing your PIN number, this is reading your card information. Uh, another type is if you look at this diagram here, if I'm holding it steady enough, um, if you look at the camera itself which is blown up, uh, superimposed there, it's uh, about a half ounce camera so it doesn't weigh anything. Double sided tape, they put it under the top portion of where you would slide your ATM card into uh, and they can read it that way as well. So you just want to be aware when you, before you go uh, put your, your cards anywhere, and this could be in a, also at a gas station pump, you want to make sure you're looking behind you when the attendant <coughs> excuse me, is putting the, um, the credit card into the slot that it does look uh, real and it's not something fraudulent. You could actually, you know, for an ATM machine, it's, it's pretty easy to look in there, make sure there's no cameras or anything like that um, that you want to be aware of. But as far as what actions they could take to see if their identity was taken, take a look at your bank statements 
your credit card statements, uh, especially your credit card statements. If you see charges on there for just small amounts, pennies or small amounts, you know, dollar or two, uh, it could be like a test charge to see if you're going to catch that. Um, in addition to that, you could also, um, if you're not getting bills that you're supposed to get from whether it be the government or uh, your credit card or anything, like that, if, you're, if your mail is not being delivered regularly as it should with the monthly bills, that could be a sign as well because uh, what they could do if they steal your identity is change your address to theirs and have things delivered there, like, you know, certain things. And this could also apply, I believe, to car loans and that kind of stuff. They could change it to their oh, absolutely. name and then default on them. Um, it's interesting because when we talk about taking people's identity, it's, it's not just through skimmers. Now, when they, when they do put a skimmer, I just wanted uh, to elaborate a little bit on, on the skimming devices. Say in uh, gas pumps, sometimes they have the pass key, and they'll go in the middle of the night, and they put a skimming device, they open the, uh, the, uh, the, the gas pump up. The skimming device is almost like an uh, extension cord. They close it back up, they'll keep it on there for about two days, they'll go back and sneak it out, and it, now it has all your information. Um, another way that they, they take people's information, and uh, I've seen this where they commit a commercial burglary at a mortgage company, and they'll take files. And uh, I'm, I was working a case not too long ago with uh, several other jurisdictions with that. And then at that point, they have all your information and they will open up different types of accounts in your name and even do uh, income tax returns in your name. They just take your identity. Wow. That's not it's kind of scary. Yeah. That's not good. Um, but, but I heard you speaking before, um, Patrolman, with regards to um, ATMs mm -hmm. <coughs> and what, what, what should, what should um, residents do? Uh, what type of ATMs should they really go to? I mean, you do have them in 7-Elevens, you have them in Quick Checks, yeah. you have them in um, um, the banks, of course, outside the bank. Sure. Yeah, it c and I mean, any one of them could fall victim to uh, a skimming device. Um, you know, I mean, to avoid one or the other, I, you just really have to be aware of the device itself. Make sure nothing is loose on it. There's no, nothing that looks like it's double-sided taped anywhere. Um, that would be my recommendation. I personally would probably avoid uh, ones other than the bank. I would try to go to a bank. Well, that's I go to only yeah. the bank. Yeah. I've never, I don't think I've ever taken. Right. Not to say, I mean, that the ones that yeah. are in a bank are, are fraudulent, but it's just. It, it's but for me, you'll, it's you'll see practice. that the ones in the bank do actually get caught better because they do train um, the people who work in the bank and the bank security to inspect those. Right. Sometimes hourly to, to see if the ports has. Uh, what uh, Officer Remo uh, D'Alessandro said, they, it actually snaps right in on top mm. of the other port. You know, and you also, uh, also you have to watch shoulder surface because sometimes if they don't have the camera on there, you'll have people surfing over your shoulder looking for that pin number. Right. Mm. You know, so when you're putting your pin in, some you know, right. cover yourself up. I, do, I cover my hand or whatever. I, I got a bigger hand so I can do it with one shot. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about, uh, I, I don't know if there are scams, because I know in the Intervale area at one point, um, there was a solicitors, and sometimes people in town get nervous with solicitors. Mm -hmm. I know one was um, a window company over there, and, um, and what should re residents look out for that? Because I know sometimes, you know, we received phone calls on the Mayor's Action Center mm -hmm. saying, they told us from there, but the person wouldn't leave, and I tried to, you know, get them to leave, and they were adamant enough to say, you know, yeah, they, I, I mean, they have, a, have to have a solicitor's license, I right. would imagine. Correct. But, but I know you probably field some of those phone calls that we get. Yeah, and we've responded to a lot of those incidences. Um, incidents. Basically, not all solicitors um, are looking to do criminal behavior, okay? Um, but we do go to a lot of them, the calls that way, that they're not registered. Uh, every solicitor in town has to be registered with Town Hall and the police department gets a copy of who is supposed to be soliciting uh, legally with the license. They're supposed to carry that license on them with picture identification and the form from Town Hall. Um, so you want to look out for that. And basically my the best advice, and you can probably agree with this, is um, you know, if you don't know who's at your door, you don't even have to open it. Nothing says you have to open the door just because somebody's knocking on it. If you feel um, worried or in, in fear of anything, just please call the police department. Um, we're more than ha happy to go out there, respond to the situation, and then determine whether or not they're supposed to be there. They, they, there are local ordinance summonses we can issue for people that do not obtain a license correctly. Um, what a lot of uh, solicitors do is 
they're younger kids, not from the area. They'll be transported here by one driver, dropped off in a, in a, in a location, a central location, and then the driver will say, okay, I'll be back around 6 p.m. to pick you up. Um, you know, so they have no, they're just out there to go door to door, you know, and, and our job, you know, responding to that is to find out the legitimacy of the solicitor. Um, however, there are criminal ones that are acting as solicitors. Um, we actually, not even a solicitor, it was actually a, a, a fraudulent, um, acting as a, a fake utility company. I don't know if you remember this one where it was an elderly female alone um, had answered the door to someone who was dressed in a, like, almost like a, an electrical utility or gas utility company with the, the reflective vest and the helmet and all that. Um, and they said, you know, I had to check your meter. As he brought her around to the side to check the meter, the counterpart went inside the house and burglarized it. So, you know, you also, you don't need, make sure you know you have identification, make sure they're legitimate. Why are they coming to your house without your knowledge that they're checking things, that kind of thing. You want to question it. And you could do that through your door. If they don't want to, you know, if, if they feel uncomfortable doing that, they can move on. And, you know, it's up to really you and, and your safety. So, um, and always feel free to contact the police department. That's what we're here for. We, we hear a lot of times, you know, well, we didn't want to bother the police for that. We didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, bother us. That's what we're, that's what we're there for. So funny, I was watching comedian it was funny then, but when I thought about it later, it wasn't really so funny. He said that 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, when somebody knocked on your door, it was, oh, it's company, you know, <laughs> yeah, visitors sure. are coming. <laughs> the kids would slide with the socks to get to the door. Yeah. He said, now, you knock on the door, don't answer the door. Yeah. It's like, because people are afraid. And, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame that it's come, it's yeah. come down to that. But I, I listen, in, in my opinion, Social media is good to a certain extent, sure. um, and cyber, all the internet and stuff like that. But it's really changed the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people can access your identity sure. now. Um, but that being said, I have to say, you guys and you are an IRS scam uh, pretty quick. And you know, we get the phone calls, and you know, we're like you know, town halls. Of course, we relay them to you. Um, what other types of scams are out there other than just the IRS? I mean, sure. Um. Well, it, it, there's many, many scams, and like I said before, I was talking about, uh, before, scams have been going on for centuries. Yeah. Okay, it's just now they're adapting to uh, social media, and it's just modernizing. Uh, it's funny, I talk about one scam, uh, th there's two things that people prey upon. They prey upon your kindness, and they'll prey upon your greed, okay? Uh, very familiar when people are familiar with the 419 scam, the Nigerian scam, where uh, you know they contact you and say, uh, you know, I won the, uh, the lottery and I could share this money with you, but you need to send some money just uh, in good faith and help us. And, and he even talks in there about, well, we have to bribe some officials so we can, you know, get this investment out. And people will, and I actually, <coughs> several years ago, I made an arrest on that uh, with someone who was an intermediary. Mm. Uh, between that and unfortunately, uh, the gentleman actually passed away before he went to trial. Um, but he had taken a woman for over $400,000. Wow. And he also had taken another man for over six, and who was actually a doctor for over $600,000. Wow. And what they do is they just keep baiting you like, well, we'll get it. We just need a little bit more money. They do that too. And that's preying upon your greed. Sometimes they prey upon your kindness. Uh, you're looking to ad adopt an animal and, and somebody uh, says, oh, I, Craig, I, I do have an animal, but, you know, you have to pay for the ship, you know, to, to ship the animal over. Oh, now we need a bigger crate. Can you send a little bit more money? Uh, the animal then just got sick, and they send a picture of the animal. Oh, the animal then got sick. Uh, we have to pay the vet bills. So you keep, keep paying the money, and they win your confidence, uh, hence right. confidence scams. Uh, there's ones with apartments, and I've seen that before where uh, people say, oh, you know, I'm renting this apartment. It's not even theirs. You know, they do that a lot of times if somebody's relocating to say, I'm going to relocate to California. So like, ah, yeah, right on, on you know, 123 ABC Street. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, they pack up, they move in there, and either the apartment doesn't exist or there's somebody living there. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, you have that. You have the lottery scams. I've seen that where people will have the numbers and they change the date and they say, oh, I won this lottery, you know, $10,000. Unfortunately, you know, I'm an undocumented citizen and I, and I can't cash this in. So I'll sell this to you, you know, for, for about $5,000, but it's, it's worth, you know, mm. 25000 And people will fall for that because, once again, this is their job. They win people's confidence. Right. This has been going on for years. Yeah. 
you know. And even not um, just limited to by phone, but like we were talking with the in-person solicitation. Um, again, going back to if it's too good to be true, it probably is. If we get a lot where, you know, uh, people come to the house and say, you know, we'll redo your driveway. It looks like it oh. needs to be redone for a, a minimal cost. And what they actually do is just pour gasoline on, on the, on the uh, blacktop and it makes it nice and shiny. It looks brand new. And it ruins the driveway. They get probably about fifty dollars, you know, maybe seventy-five dollars for it, and they walk away with your money. And it, they've done nothing but actually, you know, hurt the pavement. But um, you know, so the little things like that are, are, you know, they've been going on forever before even the internet. So, um, what I would like to, to mention, if I can, is um, if you fall victim to identity theft, um, then you know, by all means, contact the police department, and Detective Sergeant Puzo, and his and his detectives. Are, fully investigate the incident. If you feel like you're just getting a scam phone call, um, that's a little bit different as far as how we would handle it because we're just gonna refer you to the Federal Trade Commission uh, website or phone number. And if I could hold this up on here, we'll probably get it on the screen as well, I believe. Um, FTC.gov is the website. Um, and there's the number is 877-FTC-HELP, which is 382-4357. Uh, on the website is a great video, how to file a complaint. Um, and th their website has numerous tools and scam alerts and all sorts of uh, great information on there. Um, then the other part is if, uh, if you're, you think your identity has been taken, um, the, not only calling the local police department, but you can also contact these, the th one of the three uh, major credit bureaus on here. And again, I think they're gonna be put up on the, on the screen as well. Um, I don't know if you can see that on there, but. Uh, it's going to be Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and, and I believe, like I said, this will be put up on the screen if you can't see it too well. Uh, they also, FTC has outstanding literature as well. Um, some of the examples I have here, just simple brochures, 10 ways to avo avoid fraud, um, pamphlets on the phone scams, so they explain exactly what we're talking about here today as well, uh, lost or stolen credit ATM and debit cards, what to do if any of that information gets stolen. Uh, and they have this great booklet uh, it's entitled Taking Charge, What to Do If Your Identity Is Stolen. And this has a ton of information in it. Uh, all of this literature can be obtained uh, online at the FTC.gov. I believe it's actually um, bulk orders, bulkorder.ftc.gov. Uh, and, and that's open to the public. You can order this stuff. They, I believe they also have downloadable PDF files as well. So it has great information, basically everything that we're talking to, we're talking about here. So, well, we'll gentlemen, yeah. I mean, I think you covered it all, to be honest with you. But do you have anything, Sergeant, you'd like to add? or? Uh, just want to say uh, it's good to, to keep track of your stuff. Always check your, always check your accounts. You know, that yeah. way, if you are a victim and all of a sudden your bank account's wiped out, you kind of have a time frame, and it helps the investigators to do that. Yeah. I think so you said it all. We, we're more than help, happy to help. If you have an, any questions, just contact me, the Community Relations Officer at Port Symphony Police. Uh, just by contacting the main number, you'll get put to a, an automated menu, and, and uh, be more than happy to answer any questions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, thank you for tuning in to Pride and Port Symphony. Um, before I close this uh, segment out, I do want to say that we're going to be doing a lot more um, community outreach with our police department. And it's, it's very important that you get to know um, the individuals that protect you and here to serve you as well. Um, we have programs that are going to be coming down that we're going to be working on together with my administration um, with the police department. One, and I'm looking forward to doing a program on active shooters, uh, which we've done at Town Hall and it's been very successful. And, you know, the education and is very important, and not just the education, getting to know the individuals that protect and serve you. Um, they do a great job in town, and I always like to thank you. Uh, Sergeant Puzo, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patrolman. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And um, once again, like I said, thank you for tuning in to Pride and Parsippany. And until next time, God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you.